It's completely bad. Um, the Escondido Creek Conservancy has been around for 25 years now, and this is the first time we saw willow dieback like this at this scale. And we were aware of other areas in Southern California with experiencing similar diebacks with the shot hole bore, and so we were very concerned. So the reason that I'm here that uh, I was contacted by uh, people from Escondido Creek Conservancy about uh, some dieback issues that they have been seeing on their willow trees. That's why when I first came here, uh, my uh, question in my mind, whether these trees are dying because of the lack of the water, because of the drought, or some actual pathogen. So the, 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 there was a, uh, looking at the, if other plants are showing some symptoms. So I couldn't see any sign, symptom of any drought or lack of the water because I just talked to um, the people in, in, in uh, Escondido Creek Conservancy. They told me that the, this creek has water year around. So it looks like that there is no lack of water issue in this particular creek. So that's answered one of the questions that I have in my mind. When I also look at the plant, if the, if the plant is dying because of the pest or pathogen, you usually see symptoms on the part of the plant, not whole entire plant. So in this case, what I see, some of the branches are dying, some of the branches are healthy, no problem. So that also gives me an idea that these dying shoots could be caused by the pest or pathogen. So uh, they sent me some samples. Uh, we tried to identify uh, the, the cause or agent. Uh, the sample was only one sample, so we were not able to identify what's causing it. And that's why I decided to come here to see the situation and take more samples uh, to identify the actual cause. So today I'm here, so I saw the, the plants are dying from, from the top of the plant, going to the down. So it's, it's very interesting uh, dieback. I just took some samples. Uh, what we are gonna do, we are gonna take those samples into the lab, make isolation to identify whether it is a bacteria or fungi. So within a week or so, we are gonna be able to identify those pathogens based on their uh, DNA analysis. So once we identify those pathogens, we are gonna let uh, people know what it is. If there is a control measures, we are gonna recommend them any control measures. If there is no control measures, whatever we are gonna find, so we are gonna probably investigate to weigh of controlling this past.